I wonder what player two's going to pick. Well, what do we have here? What do you live next to, a barn? And it's worth $2,000 if you get this one right. Okay, now I've heard of the name Jan, and I've heard of the name Janet, but... Suppose a fun new couple moves in next door and the wife introduces herself as Janet. What would you expect her to say about her husband? I'd like you to meet the bastard sometime. My jackass husband will be over shortly. My husband's a real son of a bitch. Or... My hubby. What a bore. Your new neighbor's last name isn't Ziffel by any chance, is it? Balls in your court, player two. Here's what you should have picked. A Janet is a female donkey, and a jackass is a male donkey, or a beer-swilling neighbor at a cookout. Player one, your choice. What are we doing? Coming at you, middle-aged crisis and fruit. And you pocket 2,000 bucks if you get this one. So, you remember the song Cruel Summer by Bananarama? Say Bananarama releases a song called Cruel Spring after reading T.S. Eliot's poem, which begins, April is the cruelest month. What might the tour be called? The Song of Myself Tour, the I Know Why the Cage Bird Sings Tour, the Road Less Travel Tour, or the Wasteland Tour? Take a shot. Uh, could we have the check, please? Player one, you can take it. I know why the caged bird sings. No, you're thinking of Maya Angelou's poem, I don't know why the confused player answers. <laughs> Bet you wish you'd pick this. <laughs> T.S. Eliot's poem is The Wasteland, so Cruel Spring would be part of The Wasteland Tour. I bet if Eliot saw the band, he changed that line from Do I Dare Eat a Peach to Do I Dare Eat a Bananarama? Let's have a category, player one. May I introduce Hubba Lubbo, Jason Priestley? $2,000 says you don't know this one. Okay, imagine this. Due to low ratings, Beverly Hills 90210 moves to zip code 02134, home of the 70s kids show Zoom. In Ubby Dubby, how might the 90210 cast respond to its new hometown? Wubby Hubby Bubba Stubbin. Wubby Hubby Chubby Cubba Gubba. Wubby Hubby Nubu Yabork. Or Wubby Love of Pubby Rubbis. Player one, hit it. This'll just be our little secret. Make your move, player two. Hey, got a minute? Take a look at a right answer. In plain English, the cast would be saying, We hate Boston, the city attached to zip code 02134. But that's okay, they're from Los Angeles, so the commute to Rodeo Drive shouldn't seem any longer than usual. Player one, give me category. The category is Dance Mania. Get it right, I'm handing over 2K. Uh, let's see if you can wrap your head around this. Suppose instead of the St. Valentine's dance, your high school had organized a St. Vitus's dance. What would you have probably seen that evening? A group garter snake dance? Dates being given corsages of rotting flesh? Dancing teens twitching uncontrollably? Or awkward dateless teens being ordained? Player two. Let me guess, you were one of those goth kids who wore black to school every day, weren't you? Player one, it's yours if you want it. The correct answer is... St. Vitus's dance is another name for Korea, a nervous disorder that makes the victims twitch and look like they're dancing. Either that or the band is Devo. Player one, anti up.
Okay, give it up for Let's Put Insecure Boys on Guard Duty. $1,000 at stake on this one. Put it in gear, because here we go. If Charlie Brown had been forced to man Checkpoint Charlie, what Peanuts movie might audiences have seen? It's the Berlin Wall Charlie Brown, it's the Great Wall of China Charlie Brown, it's the Ho Chi Minh Trail Charlie Brown, or it's Canada Charlie Brown. Layer 2 is Ho Chi Minh. You mean No Chi Minh. Layer 1, what do you say? Checkpoint Charlie was a famous checkpoint along the Berlin Wall. I always thought Linus would make a better guard because he has that security blanket. Get it? <laughs> security blanket? <laughs> Player one, it's up to you. What's next? This one likes to go by, Christ, who left this mess? You give me a right answer, I give you 3,000 bucks. Hope you brought your suit. It's time to get wet. If Andy Warhol had included references to some of his other famous works when he painted his Last Supper series, which of these would you not have seen? Mary ordering a Starbucks, Peter washing pots with a Brillo soap pad, Paul drinking Coca-Cola, or Jesus eating Campbell's soup? Layer 2, grab it! Andy Warhol painted many advertising images, but he never copied Starbucks. Would you like room for cream? No, my son. My cup runneth over. Player two, give me something. Shake hands with Teen Rebellion in the Animal World. How does $2,000 sound? Ready? Picture this. You're a mammalian teen rebel. You pierce your nose, join a punk band, and call yourself Earth Pig, which is what your name really means. But your folks still insist on calling you what? Beaver, opossum, aardvark, or armadillo? Layer one hit. Ah, uh, no. I think armadillo is Spanish for horny little bastard. Layer Layer. The Afrikaans name for the nocturnal African mammal known as the aardvark literally means earth pig. <laughs> Maybe mom and dad will respect your wishes and start calling you that if you get a tattooed across your forehead. You have the honors, player two. All right, player two, you made the right choice, because it's time for you and only you to play Dis or Dash. This Dis or Dat's category name is... They were actually abducted by aliens. All right, listen up. I'm going to read off seven facts, and for each one, I want you to tell me whether it applies to Abraham Lincoln, John F. Kennedy, or both. If the fact only applies to Lincoln, press one. If it only applies to Kennedy, press two. If it's both, press three. And if you want to skip one, press four. I'll give you 500 bucks for each right answer, and 500 will be taken away if you get it wrong or don't get to it. Okay, give me 30 seconds on the clock. Let's dance. Assassinated Lincoln Kennedy. Elected in 1860. Elected in 1960. Succeeded by a guy named John. And a secretary named Lincoln. And a secretary named Kennedy. Last one. Seven letters in his last name. This is it. Answer it quick. That's all she wrote. Six right. Not quite perfect, but you can't get any closer. Let's throw it into your score. Hey, that's something. Let's keep going. Let's have a category, player one. Renovi is number nine. The selection is Tony and Rico do the cha-cha. Two thousand bucks for a correct answer. All right, there's no shame in admitting it. You're a big Barry Manilow fan, right? You probably know all the words to his song. So get ready to buzz in and type out your answer when you know the answer to this. The Copacabana is the hottest spot in... Now or never, player two. Start typing and... Barry Manilow's song is about the club Copacabana, the hottest spot north of Havana. 
Although Havana is pretty hot. Fidel Castro dancing around with yellow feathers in his hair and his beard trimmed down to there. Player two, take your pick. Okay, make yourself presentable, because you're about to join a three-way. Okay, listen up. This is pretty simple. You're going to see a three-way like this one. Buzz in when the correct three-way member is lit up and you score. But look out, it'll cost you a grand every time you're wrong. And be careful, individual answers don't necessarily have anything to do with the three-way as a group. So, let's get it on. Category for this one is Mis Amigos. And that means we're going to be joined by Chase Martin or Short. Okay, hand on your buzzer. Here's your three-way. Oh, yes! Catch your breath while we see how you did. Well, player two, it wasn't the sun and the moon, but I wouldn't kick you out of bed for that performance. Not that I'm very picky. Uh, so, let's check out the overall scores. Player two, you're still in control of the game. Very impressive. And now we return to our regularly scheduled program. Okay, we're halfway home. Let's see how round two treats you. All right, kids, arm yourselves. One screw apiece. That's enough to get you started. One more thing, don't be afraid of those screws. You got them for a reason. If you want to force your partner there to answering the question, just buzz in, slap the S key, got it? Now get in there and screw with abandon. Your turn, player two. What's it going to be? This one's called Saturday Morning Worship. One right answer and $6,000 head your way. Flex those fingers, because here it comes. If the religious philosophy called Transcendental Meditation were to be incorporated into a new cartoon, what might be the name of the show's lead character? Winnie the Buddha, Elrond Mother Hubbard, Maharishi Mahesh Yogi Bear, or Reverend Sun Myung Spider Moon? Take a shot. Sweet dreams. Player one, you can take it. The Indian Maharishi Mahesh Yogi founded the Transcendental Meditation Religion. Now repeat this mantra. I will not steal picnic baskets. I will not steal picnic baskets. Player one, hit me with the category. Pucker up for Get a real job, Alice Cooper And it's worth $2,000 if you get this one right Hey everybody, you know who Alice Cooper is, right? The king of 70s shock rock Well, if Alice Cooper reworked his old hit No More Mr. Nice Guy into a song about Coopers What would make the best title? No More Mr. Wheelwright No More Mr. Barrel Maker No More Mr. Chicken Farmer Or No More Mr. Blacksmith Wheel right, real wrong. Player one, it's yours if you want it. A cooper is someone who makes barrels. Yeah, I don't know, though. A huge barrel with flame shooting out the top just doesn't sound nearly as frightening as a giant skull. Oh, maybe it's just me. Player one, your choice. What are we doing? Swing your partner one and three. A do si for the big th Say hello to Brownie Points for a thousand big ones for a right answer here. Oh, this is great. The, the girls from Girl Scout Troop 109 are here today, and we're going to have one of them host this question.
Okay, Raul, who's the lucky guest host going to be? Uh, that would be Kimmy Wedbetter. Fantastic. Uh, come on out, Kimmy. Don't be shy. Hello. Who the hell are you? I'm Kimmy Wedbetter. You're a grown man. No, I'm not. You're at least six foot two. You have a goatee. Mom says I have a glandular problem. Yeah, you've got a problem already. Hey, Cookie, quit picking on the little girl and get on with it. Can I read my question now? <laughs> Fine. Take it away, Kimmy. Okay. Which of these is not a type of Girl Scout cookie? Chocolate creamies, Samoas, caramel delights, or dosi dos. Layer one. Chocolate creamies are not Girl Scout cookies. <laughs> but if anyone wants to put in an order after the show, I do have samples of all of the real types of Girl Scout cookies. Great question, Kimmy. Thanks, Mr. Cookie. It was really, 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 really fun. Yeah. Um. Thanks for coming. Great. Okay, let's move on. Player one, tell me what's happening. And this one is, the Pope got a ring in his Cracker Jack. Get a right answer, you're walking away with four grand. Hey, you know how it's a sign of respect when someone kisses that big old ring the Pope wears? Well, imagine that the Pope owned a mood ring. So, take a look and tell me. What mood is the Pope in? Anxious, sensitive, tense, or happy? If the Pope felt sensitive, the ring would be green. And I'll tell you, I wouldn't be kissing a finger with something green on it. Balls in your court, player two. Take a sh- From what I can see, the Pope's mood ring is bright blue. That means he's pretty happy today. And why not? He's got a cool hat and a nice ride. He's styling. Hmm, I wonder what player two's gonna pick. 15th floor, lingerie, housewares, and useless trivia. Well, looks like this category is from bad to verse. And you pocket 2,000 bucks if you get this one. Just step up and take a swing at this one. Which of the following poets might have written this question? Carl Sandburg, Sylvia Plath, E. e. Cummings, or Walt Whitman? In case you're wondering, E. E. Cummings was known for using only lowercase letters in his poems and sometimes placing the words in different places on the page, as if it weren't hard enough to read poetry. Player one, gimme category. Uh Uh-oh, blah, 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 blah. It's time for a Triple SNS fun. Let's see if you can make sense of this gibberish category. Bitter letters to the fashion editor. The opening value for this gibberish question is $10,000. Okay, you're going to have about 30 seconds to solve this, but every second and a half, I'm taking away some money. Okay, listen up and tell me, what children's phrase does this rhyme with? Signed, first cheap, curse you, sir sleepers. And be careful not to be fooled by the punctuation. First clue, it's how kids gloat. I've got my little pony and you don't. It's how kids gloat after a discovery. Go for it, player one. Type in your answer. (laughs) Finders, keepers, losers, weepers. The unofficial policy of the IRS. Player one, ante up. Number 17. Here we have... Give me a call sometime. Get it right, I'm handing over 2K. Okay, let me warn you right now, this one's kind of saucy. Say you're a guy and you dial an escort service to request a call girl. Instead of a prostitute, however, you're sent a woman with a call. What's unusual about your date? Her head shape makes her voice very loud, her mouth is on the back of her head, she has a fetal membrane on her head, or she has another head growing out of her neck. Layer one, hit it. Babies born with a call have part of their fetal membrane still wrapped around their head like a hood. I think that's one sheath that'll guarantee she won't get pregnant. Layer one, it's up to you. What's next? Let's
Let's see what we got going. Tip your waitress and cough. How does $4,000 grab you? Hey, did you hear the one about the stand-up comedian who went to see his doctor? After the exam, the doctor tells the comedian, I've got some bad news. You haven't got a funny bone in your body. Which bone is he missing? His olecranon, his humerus, his tibia, or his sternum? Layer two, it's yours. Nuh-uh. If the comedian was missing his tibia, he wouldn't be able to pull his leg. Layer one. The bony projection that forms the point of the elbow is your olecranon, commonly known as the funny bone. No joke. Yeah, I used to enjoy going to the doctor's office until I started getting heckled every time I got undressed. Player one, your choice. What are we doing? Step right up for question 19. For your enjoyment, please pass the leg of Sam. Better wake up. There's 6,000 bucks at stake. Let's rock. Say you want to dine with the supposedly flesh-eating folks that were named Cannibal by the early Spanish explorers. Which of the following would describe your appetite? You're hungry for Italian, you feel like a little West Indian, you want to try some Mexican or Chinese, sounds really good to you. Layer 1, hit it! Early Spanish explorers used the word Cannibal to refer to the supposedly people-eating peoples of the West Indies. So just think twice before you order Polish sausage. Let's have a category, player one. Question number 20. And I believe this one's called Another Reason CDs Are Better Than Vinyl. And get this one right, you got 4K coming your way. Okay, you know what I hated about records? They got all scratched and broken after a while. If you've got an LP that's broke, it's probably from overuse. But if you have an album that's baroque, which of the following composers is most likely responsible? Bach, Bernstein, Beethoven, or Brahms? Brahms is the guy responsible for that popular lullaby. Good night. Player one, what do you say? For the curious, here's the right answer. The person responsible for the most popular Baroque music is Johann Sebastian Bach. Today's music is crap! Uh, Mr. Bach, I'm going to have to ask you to leave. Player two, give me something. Chickadees, you're about to be attacked. Pay attention to the clue. Kiss my base. No, really, kiss it. You know, for good luck. Oh, come on. All right, fine. By the way, I think this is yours too. You don't know. Very nice work, people.